Hey, Jamie Hartley back from Crossfader again, and in today's video, we're diving deep into Record Box's export mode. I'm gonna be sharing all of my tips and tricks for helping me and you manage your music library, prepare your music, and just things that some people aren't aware of within this program. This is perfect for any users using USB or SD cards with Pioneer's CDJ or XDJ range. Remember, if you have any comments, drop them below, and I'll do my best to get back to every single person. Let's get stuck in. Welcome to the export mode of Rekordbox. Let's start with a really quick, simple one. These blue waveforms are nice, but we can change them to an RGB color, clicking the gear icon, then in the view, and if we just scroll down under the waveform, we can click RGB. This allows us to then see our waveforms with the lower, middle, and high frequencies. This is particularly nice for when you're setting up your hot cues or loops to check out what frequencies are in the different parts of the tracks. Next up, we're going to look at hot cue banks. This is quite a hidden feature within Rekordbox's export mode. If a hot cue bank playlist is not showing up here on your record box, just click the gear icon, again on the view tab, scroll down and under tree view, let's activate hot cue bank list. Click off the settings and now you'll notice a hot cue banks lists tab that's appeared in our left hand navigation menu. What does this do? Well, first of all, let's do this in practice and actually make one. Click the plus and let's label this record box tips example. Now I've got a few tracks in a playlist that I already had prepared. To use the hot cue bank list, all we need to do is load the track into the player. Once the track's loaded, we can then check it out and figure out where we want to set up our hot cue. Now this has got a nice acapella at the start. And I just want to set the hot cue on that first word of the acapella. To do that, navigate to that first word and just click A. You'll notice now it, it's put in the track title, the title of the track, the artist, and the time of the hot cue. Now we can have up to eight different hot cues here. Just bear in mind, dependent on the CDJ or XDJ that you're playing on, you may only have access to up to the first three. I'm going to set up a few more from different tracks. Think of these as a hot cue playlist. We can have different hot cues on different tracks, all loaded at the same time on the CDJ or XDJ. Back to the hot cue bank list. I'm just gonna jump straight from the acapella to the drop. Maybe even this break just before the drop. Hit B, and you'll notice now we've got the two different tracks. Let's listen to this in practice. And it jumps between the two. I'm going to show you this in practice on the actual CDJs so there isn't a delay between the two as there is on the software. Let's do one last one really quickly. It's worth trying to pick tracks that are a very similar BPM, if not the same BPM. Obviously, you don't want the track that you're jumping to to be a total different BPM. Let's set one up on the drop of this one and hit C. Nice. This then, you can right click, export hot cue bank list to your um, device. Press OK and that has exported. You'll notice under devices that we now have a folder labeled hot cue banks. There it is. On the CDJ or XDJ, you can now just navigate down to hot cue bank and select that hot cue bank list. If hot cue banks aren't showing up on the CDJ or XDJ, you will need to navigate to your device in record box to the category settings and make sure Hot Cue Bank is in the active categories. Please note, however, that the hot cue bank list, as you can see here, only works on these following CDJs or XDJs. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on the XDJRX, which I think is a bit of a shame, but for now, we can still use them on a club setup on most of the current CDJ and XDJs. The next tip in this video is, again, a pretty simple one. Let's just load in this first track. And this is an easy way to set up cue points and hot cues and, and loops throughout your track and making sure you are setting them up in phrase. There's this feature here on Recordbox export mode. 
Now we can click the drop down menu and select different length, i.e. 8 bars or 16 bars. Now 16 bars is a common length of time in especially house music. We can then jump left and right throughout the track, clicking these buttons, and you'll notice it jumps in exactly 16 bars. There's an extra bar there just before the drop, and we click it again, it jumps to the next breakdown. Other tracks, let's have a look. If we go to the first beat, and then click once, twice, three times, we're on the drop, that's three lots of 16 bars. And you can see how the tracks are structured in this way, all the way through the track. There we go. Another tip for this is rather than using your mouse, is to get used to the keyboard shortcuts. It's as simple as pressing the left and right arrows on your keyboard. This allows you to scroll through the track in phrase. Make sure you're on the beat first of all before you start beat jumping forwards. The next shortcut if we want to set a cue point is just to literally press the C button. This puts a cue point there. If we want to then save that cue point we can press the M button which stores it in what you call the memory. The memory button is here itself but these shortcuts are really useful. You could then beat jump forwards C M. If you didn't want that as a memory point and actually would prefer it as a hot cue, then we can set up some shortcuts for that too. Within the gear icon, we can then navigate to keyboard, open the player A, scroll down to these settings here, set hot cue A, B, C, D, E, and so on. I've set these up just to be one, two, three, four, and five on the keyboard. To do this, all you would need to do if I just delete this one, is just click the plus icon, when this box pops up, press the number 5 on your keyboard and then press OK. You can do this for the whole of record box. You can assign different combinations of your keyboard to different features within record box. However, the hot cues are common things we're going to be setting. So now if I just press number 1, there's my hot cue. If I press number 1 again, it sets off the hot cue. This just really speeds up the preparation of music within record box by using the left and right buttons, C and M for cue and memory, and one, two, three, four, five. You could have six, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, sorry, um, to go up to H if you wanted. I haven't because if I use performance mode of record box, I want to be able to access six to zero for player B. The next useful, really quick little tip is record box doesn't always, when you first download the program, analyze the keys automatically when you import them into the library. The keys here can be important if you're wanting to mix in key and usually you would have to select the tracks, right click and analyze keys. There's a setting within the gear icon underneath analysis that you can enable key analysis on import. This will then analyze the keys as you drag tracks or import tracks into the record box program. It's a simple tip but sometimes overlooked by some people. Another great tip is if you have a really good set at a nightclub or a party and you've really enjoyed the set that you've played, we can actually access the history of any sets that we've played on our device, in any club, in any setting. To do this, we need to go to the gear icon. We then need to go to CDJ and device, scroll across to device, and then this history here, import the play history automatically. This means whenever you plug your USB device back into your laptop, it will automatically add the histories right down here on the bottom of the left-hand navigation of all of your sets. As you can see, we've got a few years, we can open up the year, dive into a month and even into a particular history set. It will then show you the tracks played in that set. If you wanted to save that history, for example this one, I could just right click it and turn play history into a playlist. This will then add that playlist to the bottom of my playlist panel. As you can see here, history. Click this header here to make sure that the tracks are in the order that you played them in. You can also organize them in BPM or key or any other value, but if you want them in the exact order you've played them in, that's the column there. While we're talking about saving histories, another great tip if you're struggling for inspiration as to what to play with certain bits of music, or maybe you need to create a set around a certain particular track that you like, but you're struggling for what next to play, if you select a track in your any playlist or in your collection and then click this drop down box here, it shows you all of the playlists and histories that that track is located in. This is great for getting inspiration, like I said. Let's click this history, for example. This track now locates down in my histories and shows me all the tracks that I played within that history. This particular set, I'm not a fan of, so let's try a different one. Click here. I can go to this history, for example, 
and look at all the other tracks that I played in that set. This is a great way to get inspiration for your sets. Another tool to help you if you're stuck for inspiration or for what to play next or to add to your sets if you're making a mix to record or even just creating a set to play out in a venue is the track filter option and that's located here. This is really nice. If we load any track into the player, we can then click this button while the track's playing. It will then locate that BPM and the key. Then you can choose if you rate your tracks for it to match those as well if you want, but it's quite nice to choose the BPM and the key. Let's turn this down. And I'll maybe choose that it fluctuates by plus 6%. Now when I go into my entire collection, it will show all of the tracks. Let's just open this back up again. Click Master Player. It will show all of the tracks in my collection that are the exact same key and also the exact same BPM. If I fluctuate it by 6%, we then get a range of tracks all in the same key and a bit of a fluctuation in BPM. This is a great way to locate different tracks that potentially might go with your current track for inspiration on what to play next or what to add to your sets. The last couple of tips I have for you today are to do with the loop feature. Now, so let's say for example, you wanted to set a loop and activate it. Let's choose this instrumental part, the drop here. I would then go to that point, set up my loop. Let's say I wanted to save that loop. I could store it in the memory by pressing the M button and you'll notice it then appears in the memory as a loop. I can recall this at the start of any mix just by using my call left and right buttons and work from that point and it's actually a stored loop. Even better still, if you click this button here again, set active loop, this means that whenever you play this track and it reaches this point in the mix, it will automatically activate the loop. Therefore, you don't have to press any loop features or turn any loops on while you're mixing. This will do it for you. That's especially useful if you're planning maybe short routines or need the CDJs or XDJs to do something or press a button for you that you currently don't have time to do. The last tip I've got for you is a pretty simple one. Once you've got a loop saved, you can click these three arrows here and you can export that loop as a WAV file. This will actually save this loop as a separate file. This can then be dragged into your player if you wanted to just have that loop on one deck, if you wanted to maybe add it to a sampler, whether you're using performance mode or an outsourced sampler. But once you press save, it will automatically save it to your collection. If I go by date added at the top of my collection, and there we go, inside my love, let's load this track. And we've got that loop just by itself. Thanks for watching. Those are all my tips and tricks for record box in export mode for today. We've got a performance version coming soon. And yeah, please remember to subscribe and like for more videos like this. See you soon.